Shalom and welcome to two minutes of Torah. This year is entitled Jewish Philosophy, Part 12. Just Sadiqon on anthropomorphism. So we've discussed previously that uh, Sadiqon, as well as all the shown and employed the concept Idibratar Balasham and Adam, the Torah writes in a way that man can understand when referring to God in physical ways. So it's about God's Afra Hashem. Yad Hashem, God's head, all of these terms used by the Torah, used by Chazal, are meant to be taken not literally. In no Dumut HaKuf and Laguf, God does not have a body, and therefore any reference in the Torah to God's body is not to be taken literally. Devar Torah V'lasham V'nei Adam, we show them always call, use this term, Devar Torah V'lasham V'nei Adam. Sadiqon goes ahead in the Treatise 2, which is on God, chapter at 10, he goes in and he lists uh, so many examples after example where uh, head, eye, ear, mouth, lip, face, but it's not meant to be taken literally based on rational understanding and based on our Mesorah. He has a simple question. Fine. I've explained that you're not supposed to take it literally. He says, well, why get into the discussion to begin with? Why doesn't the Torah just write in a way where it does not project onto God anthropomorphic terms and just never talk about eye and ear and God being up or down and then avoid the whole problem, which really led to many people sometimes taking it literally and not knowing they're not supposed to be uh, taking it literally. And they believe God's physical because of this. So he has a very interesting answer. He writes, that's on page 117, this is in chapter 10 in Treatise 2, on God, he writes, someone to ask, what advantage is there? In extension of meaning that's practiced by language calculate only to throw us into doubt. Would it not have been better if it had restricted itself to expressions of unequivocal meaning and thus have un enabled us to dispense with this burden of discovering the correct interpretation? Each time, says God's head, his hand, he's moving, he's this, he's resting, and then we have to go ahead and explain what well, doesn't really mean it. So he has a nice and a simple answer, which uh, is a compelling one. If language sticks up to just one term, if the Torah would only use an accurate term that describes God, prop God properly, then it would be very much curtailed and be impossible to express by means of it any more than a small portion of what we aim to convey. While we, in our effort to give an account of God, to make use of only expressions that are literally true, and it be necessary for us to desist from speaking of Him as one that hears and sees and pities and wills to the point where there would be nothing left for us to affirm except the fact of his existence. We couldn't talk anything. He, he has pity on us. He has compassion on us. Whatever we say, well, we don't really mean it, then we're not going to say those words. So what words are we left? We don't know God's essence. We cannot know. As the Adam Vachai, as the Rambam says in the, in the God, we cannot know God while we were alive and physical creatures. There is a border. There is a boundary there's between us and God. So it's a funny kind of quandary we're in. On one hand, we want to know God, we want to understand, we want to talk about God. On the other hand, anything we say is going to be limited. So we won't say anything. So we won't say anything. Now we're going to go ahead and pass on the ideas and knowledge of God. So because of this quandary, the Messiah developed an incredible tool to talk about God as a caring and loving and moving God who is strong, who is powerful, who is merciful, and yet built into the Messiah is to understand, oh, when we write that, when we say that, we don't mean it literally. So on the one hand, we can know how God does all these things, and he has actions which are similar to ones of mercy, who are similar to ones of power and gibor and, and gvura, on the other hand, not to take these li these terms literally. So that's how Sadiyon works out this dilemma, to describe God, because we need to have that feeling of God, on the other hand, not to take it literally. Shalom.